rubrics in Brightspace. A Brightspace tip brought to you by the Anne Arundel County Public Schools Office of Instructional Technology. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create rubrics, but before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about where rubrics can be used in Brightspace. Now, of course, just as you would expect, you can use rubrics on Brightspace assignments, but you can also include a rubric on discussions and portfolio items to help students understand exactly what is expected when they are creating or engaging with these types of activities and tools. Now let's talk about how to create a rubric. You have two options for creating rubrics. You can create them from inside of the dedicated rubric tool or you can create them while you're actually creating the assignment that you're going to attach them to. So let's start with that dedicated rubric tool. If I navigate to course admin from my course navbar, which of course can also be found inside of class tools, I'll scroll down to assessment and I'll find rubrics right here in the middle. When I go to the rubrics tool, I will see every rubric that I have created previously listed here. So these are rubrics that have been not only created here in the rubric tool, but possibly created inside of an assignment. And then of course here in the upper left, I have the blue button to click to start a new rubric from scratch. But I'm not actually gonna select that. I'm gonna show you the other way because whether you're inside of an assignment or whether you're here in the rubrics tool, the steps for actually creating it are identical. So if I wanted to create the rubric from inside of an assignment, I would go to content, select the unit that I want to create the assignment and rubric in, choose create new and assignment. Once I have everything set up for my assignment, including the name, score, instructions, and any attachments that I want to give to the students, I'm now ready to turn my attention to the right-hand side, this option at the bottom that says Evaluation and Feedback. So I'm going to click this toggle arrow, and right here you'll see the option to add a rubric. Within that option, I have two additional options. I can create my rubric new from scratch, or I can add an existing rubric, meaning find one that has already been used in this course, either used in another assignment or in the rubrics tool. I'm, of course, going to create one brand new, so I'm going to select that option at the top. Now, here we have the rubric creation window. We have the field up here at the top to give it a title, and then the fields below to begin adding our criteria. So you'll see here we've started to add our first criteria. We have claim and then we have the four possible levels for this claim. They'll get a point if the claim takes an appropriate position on the topic or issue addressed within the prompt and so on down the line to zero point because the claim is completely missing. As we move our attention to criterion two, you would simply highlight the words criterion two to change it to this is the evidence criteria. Add the specifics for how the students will be scored on each criteria and then you'll see that you can add additional criteria if needed. You can even add an entire additional criterion group if you needed additional ways to score the students on this assignment. You even have the field underneath of the information about how the students will receive these marks to add feedback for the students if needed. One of the great things about having this additional criterion group down here is that you can change the scoring levels. So in my first set of criteria, the maximum point they could earn for any one of these criterion was one point. Down here, I could now change that to perhaps this set of criteria is going to be worth two points and it will scale down from there. As you create the rubric, you'll see that not only does it add up the total possible points for each criterion group, but down at the very bottom of the rubric, it's keeping track of the possible score that the student could earn, earn on the entire assignment here. So right now, we have an assignment that's out of a possible five points. Finally, at the very bottom of the rubric creation window, you have an options area. When we toggle that on, you'll see that we have options like making the rubric visible to students or keeping it hidden. 
You can keep a rubric hidden until you have published the feedback for students. You can attach learning outcomes automatically or manually. You can hide scores from students, and you can even add a description that is for your personal reference. The students will not see this. Once you've added all of the information here in the rubric creation window, you're ready to select Attach Rubric. And now you'll see over here on the right-hand side that we have a rubric attached under Evaluation and Feedback. Now we're ready to turn on visibility and save and close the assignment so that my students can get started. So this has been a quick overview of how to create rubrics in Brightspace using either the dedicated rubrics tool or creating them while creating an assignment.